<laughs> oh boy, you have tuned into a great sister to sister show today. First of all, we're gonna talk about is there still miracles today? Here's a miracle, Roxanne. Yes, and we're gonna talk about what does these three things have to do with me? A movie, a cornfield, and a chalk drawing. Oh boy, stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. You have tuned in on a very special day because there are five of us here at this table and we are opinionated, beautiful women of God. And you write us questions and we answer from our hearts and from the Bible. So this question is, seems ambiguous, but I wonder what the sisters are gonna say. You wrote, what makes God, God? Hmm, hmm. Missy? Well, when I was in like elementary school, I went to a Christian summer camp every year. And I'm gonna get to the answer of the question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we, they would give us incentives to earn money towards camp. And I would always do all the incentives because I was the oldest <laughs> child in type A and all that stuff. And one of the incentives was to memorize scripture. And I memorized a lot of scripture because I grew up going to Christian church, Christian school. I was all, Jesus. all the things. Um, and I learned this passage of scripture that has always stuck with me. And I think this answers the question. Okay. Mm. It's John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Yep. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him. Without him were not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. And you learned that in elementary school? Yes. Good girl. Amen. Good girl. That's, that's, what ex I have any, that's exactly what I have. That's, that's the what answer. I mean, that's what you have. Oh, come on. So that is the answer of what makes you Okay, answer. wait a second. Like literally, how can you encapsulate like who God is, the creator, the one who was and is and is to come, the, it, it's hard to, it, and we're yeah. in this little peanut brain trying to encapsulate mm -hmm. who is God. I mean, and the three of you are the he, same. He created everything. Yes. He saves and Every, redeems. Yes. Even his creation is Maker. groaning yes. for the revealing of the sons, sons of, of men, God. the return of Christ. Yes. And he not only redeems us, he uh, raised Christ from the dead and he will raise us from the dead. So that's why the Bible says he's the beginning, the end, the alpha and omega. Okay, well, I would like the wisdom of Flo. Who is God? No, uh, no. Yeah, what makes God <coughs> God? Come on. I don't know about the wisdom of Flo, but I'll give you Flo's opinion. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's Good. The fact that I'm not. <gasps> that you're not God. That's absolutely. And he is that God. Is absolutely. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I'm writing that down. With my flu, I am. <laughs> Good girl. I like well, it. And you know the coolest thing is that you know we the the creation is declaring His Majesty. Mm. You look at the That's skies. The you look at the sea. Mm -hmm. You look at the mountains. You look at the oceans. You look at other countries declaring the works of God. But in Psalms it says. What is man that you're mindful of him? Mm -hmm. Like we're so much, we're the greatest creation he ever made. So honestly, we see a touch of the goodness and grace of God in each other. You know, when we were, a couple of shows ago, we were talking about this kind of thing, what makes you even believe, right? And I was telling you about in Daniel, how Daniel was praying and an angel came and said, God hears you. And as soon as you said that prayer, a command was given. So that's what makes, in my opinion, makes God, God, that I can go to him with something little, teeny, teeny, little, and he hears my prayer and dispatches an angel to help me. All right, so that's my take on that whole thing there. And ooh, this is a good one too. This is all God stuff, because we're a God show. What makes someone a Christian? Hmm. 
I would say what makes an apple tree an apple, what makes a lemon tree a lemon tree, what makes a, you know, pear tree a pear, uh, what is the fruit it, that you're producing in your life? Because you can say I'm a car, I'm a car, I'm a car, but it, <laughs> just because you say you're a car doesn't mean you're a car. So there are some people, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, but what's the fruit of your life that says you're a Christian? So what kind of fruit do you want? Well, you want you want righteousness, peace, and joy. You want uh, goodness and meekness and kindness. You want a love walk to be a part of your life. You know, quick to forgive, quick to give grace, quick to to be the first to be generous, to give, to love, to serve. I mean, there's there's fruit of a believer. I like all that fruit. Yes. What do you have? Dovetail that. James two says, "Show me your faith. I'll show you my deeds." We're not saved by our deeds, but our deeds exemplify the life of Christ. And that's exactly what James was saying, what mm -hmm. she's saying. Show us your Christianity, your fruit, by the things you do, by the character of Christ that's within you. Well, you know, that bring, that's the whole scripture about, it's not works, but faith. Right. Address that then with the yes, deeds. Yes, faith is the saving knowledge that Jesus did everything on the cross for us, for us to have new life in him to be raised from the dead. But walking out our Christianity here on earth requires work, requires the world to see that we love, that we have peace, that we have joy, that we give. Uh, what does Jesus say? You gave a cup of water, <coughs> you gave food, you clothed me. And people right. said, when did we do that? I like that? When you did it to the least in the world, you did it to me. That's right. We'll talk about Martha and Mary for one quick little minute. That's your favorite. Yeah. Okay. So Martha, Martha didn't do the works. No. I'm not following you. Okay. Well, okay. All right. Well, when you when you talked about as as she was saying about works and deeds, does God well, does Jesus love me more because no. I do the bingo at church no, or that I, I mean, serve or I greet? Yeah. I mean, my answer to the question isn't even about works at all. It you the question is what makes someone a Christian? My answer is Jesus. That's what makes someone a Christian. Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That's the answer to what, what makes someone a right, Christian. Right. Jesus, you, you, you get to the Father through Jesus. In your experience out in the world, what makes someone a Christian? I think what makes someone a uh, Christian is, as my sister has already said, the fruit that we exhibit. Um, we believe that, you know, Jesus Christ is Lord. Um, but I also have to say along with that, um, my relationship with God. So I know that we put a lot of emphasis on Jesus. So hear me, hear me well before everybody starts blowing up. Um, but Jesus is God wrapped in flesh. Come on. And so when you really look at the life of Christ, what was he exhibiting? He came to show us God, because even the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Jews who studied God didn't and studied his word, did not know God. That's mm -hmm. why they did not recognize the Christ, you know? So I think that that's very important because the word of God says that they that know their God are intimate with him in relationship with him shall do great, great, yeah. great and mighty yeah. exploits. Right. And so I can't do an exploit without knowing my God, without being in intimate. Uh, with him. Well, while I've got your attention, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you this next question. Again, if people don't understand, Flo <clears throat> has been all around the world as a missionary. She has done incredible things in third world countries. And so I want to ask you, mm -hmm. do miracles still exist today? Absolutely. And just, just real quick, if I can just very humbly say, I want to honor missionaries because I'm not one. And I, I know uh, that most people well. come that way because they see me as an itinerant moving around right. doing ministry. I have such respect for missionaries because they give up. They're like, I'm getting off the plane. Like, where's my hotel? <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> I wouldn't quite put me in that category, but, but it's an honor to be recognized with them. Yeah, well, <laughs> I've watched you. Yeah. So, but, um, now I talked so much, I forgot the question. Okay, the question is miracles. <laughs> okay, thank you. So anyway, back, back to that. Okay, um, do, awesome. do miracles still exist? Was that the question? That yeah, is yeah. The miracles question. still exist today. Yes. Absolutely. I think though that we have kind of lost how to recognize a miracle. Mm. 
and what it takes to bring it about. Because we are so, we have become so laid back. You know, we're that drive through people. We are those people that, hey, let's get in here. Let's do service. Service starts at 10, better be out by 11, you know. So we forget about the working of miracles. And you should not constantly be living in a state of needing a miracle. Miracles happen when we are perhaps behind in where we should be with our destiny and purpose in God. It shouldn't be that every day I need a miracle. Miracles happen when I am encounter when I encounter attacks from the adversary, such as when Moses was delivering the children mm. um, out of Egypt, and then he they get to the Red Sea. How do we cross? But that you was should, a miracle. That, that's right. That's so that doesn't have to happen every day. But, but he also <laughs> had a you know he had a role to play. He had to raise his rod. Mm -hmm. He had to you know. So I think that sometimes we're looking for. Miracles, like when I look at our beautiful audience and I see the young people there that are so attentive, that's a miracle to me. That is. You know, and you're, you, you are setting the stage for miracles in their life because they're sitting here under the word of God. They are seeing what they can do, how they, they can see, they're seeing a platform by which they can minister the gospel other than the traditional standing in the pulpit with a mic. And I think that's the miracle. We're looking at the miracle of the gospel right in front of us and the vehicles that God is going to use to bring that's, it forth. That's really good. But, and um, they're not on their phones. That's yes, a miracle. Yes, they're yes, working right, at yes, us right. without their phones. They're I think sometimes we have teenagers, my family, awesome. people that I love more than anything in the world are in the audience today. And they're but, beautiful. But Amy, I know you have miracles. Well, I, I have a lot of miracles. To tag off what Flo was saying, I think some people look for this spectacular and they miss yes. the supernatural. That's and good. you're, you're so, so right yes. that yes. we don't yes. live for miracles. Mm -hmm. We live in such a way um, where, I mean, if you need a miracle every day, something's probably wrong. something's wrong. That's right. Because that's not what the Bible says. But you know what? There are people right now, they need a miracle yes. touch in their body. Yes. And actually, I'm telling you, miracles are real. Don't you tell me he can't do it again right, and again. Right. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He wants to do a healing miracle in your life, a financial miracle in your life, a miracle in your marriage and your family and with your kids. Listen, we've all experienced the touch and the miraculous power of God in our lives, or we wouldn't be sitting here, you know, so opinionated because we felt God, we've seen God move and he's going to do it again and again. Miracles do happen today, 100%. And do. I think Ooh. some people think that a miracle is, as you well said, they look for the spectacular and not, mm -hmm. I love that, and not yes. the uh, supernatural. supernatural, you know, and, but yet at the same time, yes, I've seen people uh, come in, you know, needing an assistance for walking and leave out mm -hmm. healed. Right. I've seen people that were, you know, diagnosed having problems uh, bearing a child, you know, and, and have that miracle child. I've, um, I've had people who, you know, literally um, didn't have the working parts, if you will, <laughs> you know, to be able to carry a mm -hmm. child, but God miraculously That's allowed right. that to happen. Okay. So, you know, those things do happen. It's not something that just happens third world. It's not okay. something that's just in the Bible, you know, mm -hmm. but I, I just really want people to know that no matter what it is you need and no matter how impossible it seems, we serve the God of possibility. Right. And yeah. when, when you said it's not always in the Bible, mm -hmm. for people that don't read the word at mm -hmm. all, they don't have a reference to what we're talking about. In the Bible, God is doing miracles almost in every chapter. So pick it up. What do you have? I beg to differ about people that need miracles every day because I lose my keys every day and <laughs> I pray and God helps me find those keys. So I get that miracle every day. Okay? Lose your keys every day. <laughs> I'm just saying. Put them in the spot. Or, okay, or my glasses <laughs> or my phone or whatever. God be helping me. Okay? Okay. So I believe in miracles because here's the thing. There's the miracle, like every time a baby is born, it's that a is miracle. a miracle. That's every right. time That's the true. sun rises That's and the true. sun sets, every yeah. time the tide comes in, every time the seasons change, every time we take a breath, those are all miracles. The DNA that God has created, the stars in this, that are set in the galaxy, the fact that our earth is turning on its axis, the, it is mind blowing how 
science works and how complex that all of creation is. Those are all miracles that happen literally every day that we pass by and we don't even recognize. Mm -hmm. But if we stop to think about it, yeah. every breath and step wow. I take is a miracle that That's my good. brain can function to make my body work the way right. it does. Right. That is a miracle. Right. So I know we're talking about a different type of miracle, but no, we good. are living, talking, right. breathing, walking miracles. And symbols of what God can do and that he is amazing. Amen. I don't think we could have said that any better. That's I mean, right. that does answer the question, our first question, which was what makes God, God? Mm -hmm. And it answers our second question, which was what makes someone a Christian? Mm -hmm. And then as far as miracle goes, we're all here. I love what you said, Amy, our experiences, it would be an hour show, a two hour <laughs> show for me to even begin even begin to tell you the miracles that I've experienced in my life. Thank you for joining us, but don't go anywhere because we have a very special second half of Sister to Sister. Welcome back, lively discussion always when you're going to get your coffee. But I wanna tell you, we've been together for nine years. This is our ninth season of Sister to Sister. And we think that you know us and we know each other, but we're gonna take a minute now to find out a little bit more about my sister, Roxanne. Yes, and I opened the intro to the show about a movie, a cornfield and a chalk drawing. So I'm gonna start at the very beginning, like the song says. Uh, I was baptized Armenian Orthodox. And because there was no church around, we were raised uh, as teenagers in the Presbyterian church. So I had a reverence for God, but something occurred that made me realize I needed a relationship. And that began with a movie, <clears throat> The King of Kings. Oh. I was a, teenage, a young teenager, saw that movie, and I felt the pain and injustice of an innocent person, both divine and human, being uh, convicted, tortured, and crucified for really no crime at How all. How old were you? I was around 15, uh, going on 16, then 16 going on 17, but it didn't stop there. So uh, I also questioned, you know, we love majorities. Why was the majority yelling, crucify him, crucify him? And if I lived then, and the thought came into my mind, would I be in that crowd yelling, crucify him, crucify him? Or would I be the few kneeling at the cross? Well, the answer didn't come right away, but it did come. So, uh, a few months later, uh, my dad and I were invited to a corn roast. And at that corn roast, I heard the TNT, the dynamite of the Bible. Amy used it in another show, Romans 10, 9 and 10. If I would confess with my mouth, Jesus was my Lord and believed in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I would be saved. A light bulb turned on. At a corn roast. At a corn roast. Uh, sponsored by a church at the Miller Farm in Searsville, Pennsylvania. God bless them at a corn roast. God can talk to you anywhere. And uh, so that began what I call an ecumenical journey. Mm -hmm. Hungry for the word, hungry for praise and fellowship. My parents and I, uh, we went to the Primitive Methodist Church where most of the people were from. We also went to a charismatic multi cultural church that changed my life. And intertwined with all that, because of our need to fellowship and learn, we went to a Roman Catholic church for prayer and praise, a Methodist church for prayer, miracle working, uh, Episcopalian, a Lutheran, you name it, I've probably been in there. So I believe and also let me divert a little bit. I think that's why 
I have and my family has an appreciation for this network. The ecumenical nature, the diversity of people, places, programs, pastors, that I pray ushers in the unity in the body. Amen. And uh, that, that also, after that, what occurred was, and it, it was amazing to me, but maybe not so amazing to everybody else. I went to my parents' basement. I was looking for something. And I came across, and mind you, this cornfield, this experience happened August 11th, 1972. Wow. August 11th, a Friday night, I believe. So what occurred then was I went in my parents' basement and I found this chalk drawing. Of me at the age of four or five, I think they're going to show it. Uh, Corey, read that date. It's up on the screen. August 11. The same day I was saved, 12 years before the artist's hand. God had his hand when you're an infant, when you're small. Don't think he doesn't care. He knew August 11th to confirm to my heart. Was that enough? It certainly was. I didn't need confirmation. I went to my aunt's house, who was married years before I was born, and suddenly noticed this, uh, what do you call it, needlepoint? Guess what the date of her marriage was? August 11th. August 11th. Guess what the date is we're doing live to tape? August 11th. August 11th. Wow. Call it coincidence, I call it confirmation. But he also did this for me. Remember, I was crying, yelling, why were they saying crucify him, the injustice, the injustice? Would I be yelling, crucify him? And the thought came to my mind, my sin, our sin, the sins of the world, the, the hate, the, the shouting, mm. shouts out, crucify him, crucify him. Mm, wow. mm. But you know what? The Lord in his divine grace calls everyone to kneel at his cross and ask for forgiveness. So the Lord answered my question. And amazing to me that he would allow this. I didn't ask for a sign, but he gave one. So my hope is that people have this appreciation for when God calls them, answer the call. How has your life proceeded since teenager? Well, you know what? I had very strong ethnic. I said I was Armenian, so my dad watched over me Armenian. like a hawk. Mm -hmm. So if you have a dad or mom <laughs> that watches over you like a hawk, you better obey. That's right. <laughs> and the ups and downs, the ins and outs, God opens a door no man will close. And he closes a door no man will open. The leading to the school I went to that I didn't really want to, the, the leading to law school to push me in certain ways, the, the leading to do the things, uh, you know, the school board and other issues that I've been on are all, not only a service to others, but a service to this community, but also a service to the Lord to be salt and light. Have you been able to pass this faith on to your five children? Yes, my, my kids are saved. Now, that doesn't mean they're perfect. That's right. They're not. And that doesn't mean I'm perfect. God is still working, as I said, my mouth and everything else that he's trying to control. Uh, they're not perfect. But my husband and I, we were both saved. We met at the multicultural church that I spoke of uh, so dearly, the charismatic church. And I have to say this about the 70s. There was an explosion. Yeah. Even yeah. Russ Bixler here did the Duquesne University the thing. Were we dead. were there. The festivals. We were there. There was something special that I'm praying again, that anointing that brings people to him. Not as we said, societies, politics, whatever, but brings people to him so we can love our neighbor as ourself. That's right. Well, I hope you, I hope you got a little glimpse of the heart of our Roxanne today. And we're going to do this with all the sisters. Um, I'm not sure about me. <laughs> I don't know. We're, we're anxious to hear. <laughs> <laughs> We're so grateful that you tuned in today for this very special Sister to Sister. And stay right there because we're going to wrap it up right after this.
amazing and confirming to me was that chalk drawing done 12 years before the very exact day and month of my salvation. But much more amazing to me was that 700 years before the birth of Christ, Isaiah prophesied and Matthew confirmed the character and nature of our Lord. And he says in the scripture, Isaiah 42, verse 3, a bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not extinguish. He will faithfully bring forth justice. Are you the bruised reed that's about to break? Are you the flickering candle that's about to burn out? Let me remind you that there is one who calmed the raging sea. One who intervened when someone was going to be stoned. One who also rose from the dead and will be coming back again. Let's turn to him. What a great show. What a great testimony and story from our Roxanne. And we leave you every time with this scripture. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman or a sister sharpen the other. See you next time.